let's get into our lesson for today. Our lesson, we're still going to talk about the big question that we were introduced to yesterday. How do fossils and other rock layers get uncovered? Now, I do have a bit of sad news as we finish up this chapter. This is actually our last day being geologists and helping the director of the Grand Canyon National Park. It's sad news, I know, but we do have exciting news because tomorrow we start a brand new unit and it's going to be a very exciting unit. Let's go ahead and get into this big question. How do fossils and other rock layers get uncovered? I want to also review our key vocabulary word from yesterday. Erosion. In your loudest, most proudest voice, in your bedroom, at the kitchen counter, wherever you are, I want you to say this definition out loud so that everybody in your household can hear you. Okay. I hope you said it in your best voice. So much so that siblings are like, oh, okay, now I know what erosion is. Erosion, when rock, soil, or sand is worn down and moved from one place to another by water, wind, or ice. This is going to play a key role, a key role in some of the questions that we're going to be asked today. So make sure you remember your vocabulary word. Now, let's think about these same two images from yesterday. You got the Desert Rocks Canyon and you have the Keller's Canyon. We have both canyons. Yesterday, we talked about similarities and differences in both of these canyons. We talked about us seeing both, um, in both canyons that there are rock layers. And then we also noticed that there's something different. The Desert Rocks Canyon is actually deeper than the Keller's Canyon. And so in answering that big question, we're trying to figure out, well, how are other rock layers getting uncovered, right? So we see all this rock layer that is uncovered and we know that more rock is uncovered here in the Desert Rocks Canyon than in the Keller's Canyon. But how does that happen? And so this is what we want to dig deeper into today. Before we get into that, I do want to quickly go over our heading and our classwork. In our heading, you're always going to have your resources. So you have your text. You can click here for your book. You're going to do a sim today, so that link is here. You also have directions, and we'll go over that later in today's lesson, where you're going to go for that sim. Our objective for today, I will compare and contrast the cause of canyon death. And when we think about the death, we're thinking about the deepness of that canyon. Here's our vocabulary word again. It is always there following you around. You will never be able to forget what erosion is because it's there. Mm -hmm. All right. We checked out that heading. We know our objective. We know what we're looking for and what we're doing today. Let's go ahead and get back to our slide. So we know that the Desert Rock Canyon is deeper. But here's a question that I actually have for you. I want you to take 10, 15 seconds to think about, based on your lesson from yesterday and your assignment from yesterday, what do you think might be causing erosion in these two canyons? So you're thinking about the erode erosion again, right? And now you want to ask yourself, well, what's causing the erosion here? What's causing the erosion in both these canyons? You want to take about 10, 15 seconds, and I'll display the vocabulary word again to think of that answer. All right, so what's causing the erosion? If I think about that vocabulary word, I'm noticing that water, wind, or ice actually cause erosion. So when I look here, I'm looking for water, wind, or ice, and I notice that in both these canyons, I see water. I see a river flowing through them both. Therefore, water is actually causing these rocks to erode, which is actually causing these canyons to get deeper. As we look at our diagram, the same diagram we saw yesterday, we're actually going to think about, well, when we think about erosion, what's really happening in both the Desert Rocks Canyon and the Keller's Canyon. So we noticed that yesterday that more layers were exposed in the Desert Rocks Canyon, which we can visually see in this diagram. And then we noticed here in the Keller's Canyon that fewer layers were actually exposed. And so now as we think about that, I have a new question for you. Why do you think one canyon is deeper than the other? So yeah, yesterday we figured out this is deeper, but why is it deeper? What's causing it to actually be deeper? 
than the colors canyon? Take 10, 15 seconds to think about that answer. So what's causing the Desert Rocks Canyon to actually be deeper is more rock has eroded in the Desert Rocks Canyon than in the Keller's Canyon. So when we say more rock has eroded, we mean that means that somehow this water has eroded more rock than the water at the Keller's Canyon. In today's text that we're going to read, you're actually going to have a better understanding of how water and rivers actually erode rocks and how canyons can get deeper and deeper by the water or the river that's flowing through that canyon. Before we get into our text, I do want us to quickly go over our class assignment so that we know what to look out for. And if we're going to write any notes, we want to make sure we're writing notes to help us answer the questions. As usual, you have your PDN. This is your question for your PDN. Thinking about how those rocks are getting exposed. And here's our question that we're going to answer together as we read pages 17 and 18 in Rocky Wonders. They're asking us, how can rivers create canyons? As we read pages 17 and 18, we need to constantly be thinking about how rivers are creating canyons. So I have my paper and I have my pencil next to me. And as we read, I'll be jotting down notes to help us answer that question. And I hope that you are doing the same. Let's go ahead and get into our text, Rocky Wonders. Remembering we are reading pages 17 and 18. If we want to know the title of pages 17 and 18 or what we're specifically reading about, again, you can come to the table of contents. And page 17 lets us know that we are reading about the Black Canyon, which is actually located in the United States of America. Let's go ahead and get to page 17. Remembering that the page numbers up here may not be the same below, so make sure you are looking at the page numbers at the bottom of the page to get to the correct page number. As we get into the text, the Black Canyon, I want you to remember that you are taking down notes and remembering that this is the question that we are trying to answer. How can rivers create canyons? Remembering also that you are reading along with me, make sure you are not distracted by anything else because you don't want to miss anything that's going to help you answer that question. The Black Canyon, USA. The Black Canyon is a narrow and very deep canyon in Colorado. The canyon is so deep that the lowest rock layers are 2 billion years old. That is a very long time, you guys. The Gunnison River, which flows at the bottom of this canyon, is the reason most of the rock in the canyon has been uncovered. So I'm looking at the Gunnison River, and you can see it is very, very low. And look at how deep this canyon is, and that, go, that connects with the 2 billion years that this rock layer has been grown, getting deeper and deeper. That is a very large canyon. At the bottom, they give us a little hazard warning. We'll go ahead and read that as well. Daring hikers trek along the canyon floor when the Gunnison River doesn't have much water in it. Large boulders make the hike difficult and even dangerous. To stay safe, hikers need to wear and carry spe special equipment. I wouldn't know anything about hiking, you guys. I am not that brave. Let's go ahead and flip the page. How can rivers erode rock? Erode, that is one of, that's our key vocabulary word. It is the same as erosion. When rivers flow over rock, they pick up sediment and carry it away. The pieces of sediment can bump into solid rock and break off small pieces. The sediment in the flowing water breaks off more and more pieces of rock. After a very long time, a river can carve a huge canyon like the Black Canyon. Rivers can be fast or slow, big or small, new or old. Not all rivers erode the same amount of rock. For example, the longer a river flows over rock, the more it will erode the rock. The faster a river flows over rock, the more it can erode the rock. This section right here is going to help you make your prediction in your classwork 
before you start your SAM, you're going to have to answer two questions that's actually going to ask you to predict which is going to erode the quickest. And this right here is going to tell you that. So I'm going to reread that. For example, the longer a river flows over rock, the more it, it will erode the rock. The faster a river flows over rock, the more it can erode the rock. The Gunnison River flows down one of the steepest slopes of any river in North America. This steep slope makes the river flow very fast. Going over our illustration here. Here's a cool diagram actually that shows step by step what's happening. Here, we have some erosion happening here, but not as much, right? It's not so much a canyon just yet. But in step two, you notice that as the river continued to flow and sediment continued to chip away at these rock layers, now we're getting deeper. In step three, the river has been flowing for a very long time and that's why it is now so deep because this river has been constantly um, flowing and the sediment has been constantly hitting and chipping away at the rock which is now creating a deeper canyon. Reading the, cap the uh, caption, a river can form a deep canyon over time by breaking off pieces of rock and carrying them away. I am actually gonna write this down because this sounds like an answer to my question in the classwork. This diagram shows the canyon getting deeper over time. Hmm, and that's a really cool diagram too. And it definitely shows the Gunnison River chipping away at that rock causing the Black Canyon to get deeper and deeper. Now let's go ahead and get into answering our question in our classwork. Remembering high quality work includes complete sentences, so please do not start your sentence with because or anything that is not a sentence starter. So again, I took down that note and I remembered that we were looking for how ways that uh, rivers created canyons and this right here is actually telling me how so i'm going to go ahead and pull that straight from the text how can rivers create canyons rivers can form a deep canyon over time by breaking off pieces of rock and carrying them away. Now this answer also reminds me of our vocabulary word erosion and so I'm actually going to go a step further because I want that really really good quality work to turn in so I'm actually going to go ahead and type that in. This process is called erosion and there we have our answer for our question. How can rivers create canyons? we know that the water is going to actually create that sediment to break off the pieces of that rock layer. Let's go ahead and move down to the classwork that you're going to do independently. You're going to investigate erosion in your sim, and these are the directions that you're going to need to follow so that you can complete this table. You also have three questions here. Questions one and two are predictions. You're going to look at the table and make some predictions. Which test do you think will erode the most rock and make the deepest canyon? And which test do you think will erode the least amount of rock? In our text, our text helped us in this paragraph answer that question and make that prediction. Now getting to our sim. When you get into the sim, you want to go ahead and click your link in your classwork to get to the sim. Here is going to tell you that you are going to click the orange number one, Earth's Feature Simulation. After you do that, and we are very familiar with this one because we've been doing this one a lot. After you do that, you are going to come into the sim and again, we know what that looks like. Do not change the mode. You need to make sure you stay in mode one. Stay in mode one. Do not switch it to mode two because that is not going to help you with your experiment today. Now, as you go into your simulation, you are actually going to think about this table, and this is how you're going to, um, this is what you're going to do in the sim. You are going to change the river speeds and you are going to actually fast forward time. 
After you do that, analyze the layers and, and, and write your answers here.